Hello. In this lesson, we look at one of the oldest security product groups, securing the endpoint. So, what do we mean by the endpoint, and why does it matter? Simply stated, an endpoint is any device that is a node on the network, an end user computer, mobile devices like tablets or smartphones, network printers, IoT devices, and many more. Earlier definitions said that it was any device that end users would directly interact with. But with the advent of the Internet of Things, or IoT, endpoints may not even have a user interface at all. And why does it matter? Because the endpoints not only hold valuable data, but they are also the access methods, the jumping off point, so to speak, to connect to data networks at work and at home. So it should come as no surprise that attackers would consider endpoints to be a highly valuable target. The earliest forms of endpoint security products were known then as antivirus software. They scanned floppy disks for viruses by comparing a file's digital signature with a list of signatures of known viruses. This was before networks were widespread and people would take floppy disks from computer to computer using the programs and data that were stored on them on different computers. People also copied data onto floppy disks to share with friends and coworkers. So, since floppy disks were the way that data could move from computer to computer, Attackers wrote their viruses so that they would be spread by the use of floppy disks. Insert an infected floppy disk into a computer, then the computer gets infected. Every floppy that's used from that point on will get infected too. By the turn of the century, there were many companies shipping antivirus software that scanned floppy disks and local hard drives for viruses. With the rise of the internet, the speed at which files could spread increased tremendously and so did the number and types of malware variants. The numbers went from tens of thousands per year to several hundred thousand per day. These new kinds of malware were able to morph into different variations all by themselves. When they morph into something new, simple signature-based scanning and detection methods are very likely to be fooled. Another new challenge was that malware was no longer limited to executable files on local disk drives. Attackers were exploiting bugs in word processing programs and making word processing macros do harm to the computers and then spread the macro virus to other word processing files. And bugs in web browsers, such as in their image rendering code, allowed attackers to plant malware on a computer simply by a user visiting an infected web page. That infected web image would not likely get written as a file on the local disk. So in this case, file-based scanning and detection methods will get completely bypassed. So, with that as background, it's easy to see that today's endpoint security solutions must go way beyond simple signature-based detection methods to protect our devices and our networks from attack. Multiple layers and multiple methods must be used to cover as much of the attack surface as possible. Because modern malware is likely to morph rapidly and regularly into new variants, Detecting them must involve using advanced heuristics to detect entire families of malware, and hopefully future variants as well. Advances in artificial intelligence and machine learning are contributing to new methods of detecting malware. Web filtering to block known malicious sources on the internet, a particularly powerful way to combat phishing attacks. And integration with sandboxing to detect runtime behaviors of possible dodgy files. As the threats have grown to include much more than just viruses, and the attack surfaces have grown far beyond floppy disks, we've had to come a long way from simple antivirus software. Today's endpoint protection solutions have to deal with a massive array of known threats, as well as cope with the unknown. A recent addition to some endpoint protection solutions is user behavior analysis. Because the endpoint is such a valuable target, and insiders are involved in roughly one-third of all the data breaches, either intentionally or unintentionally, an endpoint protection solution that can recognize unusual user behavior will be able to either prevent the data breach or instantly provide investigators with the evidence they need. The endpoint is the perfect place to watch for those unusual behaviors. Fortinet's endpoint protection product is called FortiClient. It goes far beyond anti-malware to include advanced web filtering to block attempts to access malicious sites on the internet, endpoint compliance, which monitors the OS and application patching levels to ensure all security patches have been installed, 
and reports any vulnerable software installed on the device. Built-in secure remote access VPN client, anti-exploit protection against undiscovered application vulnerabilities, software inventory management, user entity behavior analysis to detect unusual user behaviors as they happen. And it's a full participant in the Fortinet security fabric. So to wrap up, we've shown how endpoint protection started with simple floppy virus scanning and matured into modern, comprehensive solutions that not only detect known malware, but can also tell the difference between normal behaviors and unusual behaviors on the endpoint device itself so that the endpoints can be protected against attacks or being used as a participant in a data breach. Thank you for your time, and please remember to take the quiz that follows this lesson.